from Universal Studios Hollywood, the Samuel Goldwyn Company presents American Gladiators. Selected from a nationwide search, 20 men and women have come to Hollywood to challenge our force of American Gladiators for a single honor to become American Gladiators champions. Now, here are your American Gladiators, Gemini, Lace, Nitro, Gold, Laser, Blaze, Thunder, Ice, Turbo, and Diamond. The host for American Gladiators, Mike Adamley and his co-host, Larry Zonka. Welcome to our arena, stage 27 here at Universal Studios, and another round of the American Gladiators where the semifinals are about to begin. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley, along with one of the great power fullbacks in NFL history, number 39 from the Miami Dolphins, Mr. Larry Zonka. Hey, good, good to be here. Larry, when our competition began, there were 20 contenders. Now eight remain, four men and four women. And the contenders that are still here, well, to borrow a phrase from John Houseman, they did it the old-fashioned way. They earned it. They not only earned it, I'll tell you what, they've worked at it. It's more than just sports, really, when you get here. It's the ability to get tunnel vision, the self-discipline, the ability to concentrate on what you're doing because you have camera, lights, audiences, not to mention the gladiators. So I think they display a lot of self-discipline, too. A septathlon of sorts. You have to focus yourself for seven different events, and that's exactly what they'll be doing. Let's meet the contenders for this semi-final round. In our women's semifinal, please welcome back Doran Cumberbatch of New York City, a teacher for the language impaired. And her opponent, Alekra Dorsa of San Jose, California, a child psychology major at West Valley College. In the men's semifinal, here's James Kiernan of Phoenix, Arizona, a member of the Phoenix Fire Department. And his opponent, Scott Deeger of Huntington Beach, California, a mechanical engineer. Alaitra, Alaitra, you look like everybody's little sister, the girl next door. And you have gotten away with murder on this show against the Gladiators because I think they've underestimated you. That mischievous little smile of yours, it's not going to happen any longer. They know, they know all about you. No, they're, they're tough. They are, I must say. But I'm just going to have to hang in there. You've done well. Good luck today. Scott, if there's such a thing as a home court advantage, you have it. Uh, it seems that each and every week that you're on this show, the crowd from Huntington Beach gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, you know, I owe a lot of the success to my friends because it's a long day out here and you psychologically go up and down. And uh, when I've been down, they've been cheering, and it's really helped me get back up and give it my best effort. I think the sign says it all. Do it, Dieter. Good luck, Scott. Larry? Grand. Your father was Mr. Bermuda, 1969, obviously has a lot of athletic ability. Has he called you and given you any pointers? Yes, he has. He's taught me how to he give me a few pointers on developing my upper body strength, like uh, pull-ups and chin-ups and just hangs from, the, from anything. Well, that's good. You're going to need it today because in the, in the semifinals, you're going to be going head-to-head -head in Powerball, and you're going to get a chance to meet some people up close and tough, and you'll need that upper body strength. Good luck. James, you've been through it two or three times now. You've been up the wall several times. You know, what event of the seven events, which one are you really looking forward to and why? Uh, Larry, I kind of like all the events now. You know, the, the, the pressure's on. It's the semifinals. And Larry, you know what they say about firemen. They do it when the pressure's on. You're going to have a chance to prove that because the gladiators are going to add to that pressure today. Good luck, James. Good luck, Duran. Mike? And Larry, the gladiators have that lean and hungry look. Contenders, all the best of luck to you today. Let the games begin. competition works on the American Gladiators, our contenders, two men and two women, will compete against the Gladiators in seven very different events. Now, the contenders will mass the most points in those seven rigorous confrontations 
automatically now advance to the final round. At stake, over $150,000 in cash and prizes and some big-time bragging rights back home. We are all set now to go with our very first event. It's 45 seconds of nonstop action. We call it Powerball. Here's Larry Zonka with the rundown. A look now at James Kiernan, who told us earlier that victory isn't the same if the competition isn't there. The victory is really sweet when the competition is tough. You know, it's a, the victory is really sweet, and that's that's what you live for in life is is that sweet victory that comes along. And offering the tough competition for James Kiernan is Scott Dieter. Like James, he is undefeated after two rounds of competition. The mechanical engineer from Huntington Beach, California, has brought a big contingent of fans here. Laser, Nitro, and Gemini draw the assignment for the Gladiators. James powering by Nitro for that score. James with some nice moves. Little misdirection scores another goal. He's a pretty good match for our Gladiators 3 at 6'1", 195. Very powerful guy. Boy, great effort there by Scott Dieter. Reached out over Nitro. Paid the price as Nitro knocked him into the nickel seat. Kiernan, however, having a field day. One last chance. That one counts. And James Kiernan wins Powerball. Eight, two. James jumped to the early lead in our men's semifinal, but there's plenty of competition left on American Gladiators, including Hang Tough. The wall, the women's Powerball is next. We are back, Universal Studios Hollywood, where the women will face gold, diamond, and lace in their opening event of the semifinal round Powerball. Born and raised in Bermuda, third-seeded Duran Cumberbatch told us who has had the most impact on her athletic career. My parents especially have done everything for my life, but even though my mother has been a motivator, my daddy has always been, like, the person who lifts me up and, you know, kicks me in the butt and tells me to keep going. He always gives me the words of wisdom and words of encouragement, and a lot of the time his words are the ones that stick in my mind when I try everything. Duran's father is a former Mr. Bermuda, and her opponent is Electra Dorsa, who has advanced here after entering the preliminary rounds as an alternate. Electra, there she is in the blue, Duran in the red. Electra with a nice spin move right off the bat. And you can't overpower him, you trick him. Meanwhile, Duran just gliding through this Powerball course, easily getting by our gladiators. Again, she scores. That's a good description, Mike. She almost has a fluid action. She makes it look easy. Poor Laker has to work for everything she gets. No score. No score. <laughs> There's a shining example right there. Again, Duran, with that misdirection and that quick acceleration, puts it in, and poor Laker pays the price. Duran Cumberbatch, a track star at York University in Canada, makes that experience pay off. And she wins Powerball easily, 12 to 2. Later, you ran into a couple of double teams. You missed a couple of easy buckets, so to speak, and uh, ran out of gas towards the end. And I think ultimately that was the reason why you find yourself on the end of a 12 2 deficit. That's okay. I can hang in there. I know you'll continue to hang in there. You've got a great spirit. Keep it up, okay? Duran, you told me your strategy beforehand was. Don't try to run through these people, run around them. Yeah, it works. Like a walk in Central Park, huh? Not really. Just make it look that way. Congratulations. All right, Duran. Nicely done. Duran powers her way to the women's early lead, while James holds the men's advantage as they move into their next event, Hang Tough. And here, a contender has 60 seconds to swing from this platform to another across our arena floor using a grid of rings. Ten points awarded for making it all the way across, but a contender may also earn five points 
for reaching the silver rings or seven points for the red rings without being pulled off by a gladiator. Sounds easy, doesn't it? There's our men's leader, James. He'll be up first, and he's going to face off in this event with Turbo. Remember, our gladiator Turbo goes about 265 in body weight, and it's really amazing to watch him swing. So easy, so fluid, and so close to James Kiernan. James in big trouble. James says this is an am amazing. This is scary right here. James doing his best to stay out of harm's way. Now Turbo's got the seat of his pants, but James somehow manages to get away. Look how easy Turbo turns loose with one hand, trying to do a little combat with the other. Look at the strength in that right arm. Here it looks like Houdini. He's made about four or five escapes. This one he may not get oh. away from, but he does. Oh. Now all he has to do is hang on for another 15 seconds. That's a first, seeing Turbo skin off. Usually when he gets that death grip on one of the contenders, it's all over. James can make it to the last section of rings. He's got a chance to earn seven points. The time runs out and he'll settle for five. But a great effort by James Kiernan. James, great job. I don't know how tall you were, how long your arms were before this event, but I, I think maybe you picked up an inch in height and a couple inches on your arm length. Definitely, Larry. You know, Turbo was a very he heavy man. I was wondering how long I was going to be able to hold on when he was on me. Good job. It was fun watching you compete. Thank you. Turbo is certainly not happy about that outcome, so now he'll try to take it out on our next contender, Scott Dieter. Scott has gained confidence throughout this competition, and he told us who had the major influence on his life. I think my dad's been a big influence on my life because uh, he's really shown me what it's like to uh, never quit. I know he's had a lot of tough times he's gone through, and he's just forged ahead and uh, just keeps doing great. He just never knows how to say the word quit. A native of Allentown, Pennsylvania, Scott has some of that Nittany Lion blood in him. He may be down early, but don't ever count him out. Scott trying to move to the outside. Turbo a little more aggressive. Coming almost down center court. Scott's real problem, he's trying to muscle the rings as opposed to just swing back and forth. Turbo almost looks like he's on a carousel there with that one arm. He just glides around. Hey, come on over here. Scott just waiting to be pulled off. I don't think he knows what to do. He's, he's lost his momentum on the rings. Well, he's trying to get a little momentum to swing away, but uh, Turbo's got him in that grip. And takes him down. Turbo playing it safe this time, getting a little arm lock before he turned loose. So with his win and hang tough, James increases his lead over Scott now after two events. Duran leads in our women's semifinal as they now prepare to take on ice in hang tough. And our women's leader, Duran, will swing against her first. And Duran is good and focused. Ready? Very businesslike in her approach, Mike. Uh, just another day at the shop, you know what I mean? I think Duran takes it as a personal affront anytime one of the gladiators defeat her in any event. Well, the only times I've seen her become emotional really is when she was defeated at, at something, and it really bothers her at that point. Otherwise, she's pretty non-emotional. Duran, one of the few contenders to have made it successfully across to the other platform, but Ice giving her some problems here. Ice matching her every move on the rings. There's that smile. <laughs> Duran using a little bicycle move, trying to get some more momentum to grab that next ring as the clock counts down. Duran made it to the middle section of rings, hung on for 60 seconds and earns five points. 
Electra will now face off with Ice and hear her impressions of this imposing gladiator. When I first went against Ice, I have to admit, yeah, I was a little scared when I was up there on the joust because I looked at her and I, and I shouldn't have looked at her because she was, she just blocked my whole vision. <laughs> but I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have looked at her because she's huge. But, but I did, and then I went, oh my God, she's, she's very big. Well, Allie's smiling now, perhaps smiling in the face of Ready? doom here. <laughs> Doesn't look very intimidated. Ah, she's scrapping. Moving in for the kill. Nice <laughs> heading right down to Electra's home territory here, wasting no time. Latches on. I don't think Electra's going to be able to hold that kind of weight. This looks like goodbye time. Electra fighting with her hands, trying to keep her grip. Ice trying to pry those fingers off. Now she's going to go for the arm lock. Use her body Damn. weight. So long. That's it for Electra Dorsa, so Duran wins Hang Tough and increases her margin over Electra after two events. Still to come on the American Gladiators is the Joust and the hand combat with Pugil Sticks. Atmosphere, but the wall is up next. Finals as they prepare to ascend our 32-foot wall. And once again, our contenders have 60 seconds to make it to the top while the Gladiator follows in pursuit. First contender to make it to the top will earn 10 points, and if the second man can make it to the top as well, he'll earn five. And our leader, James Kiernan, will be followed up by Turbo. He knows who's number one, while Scott will be challenged by Thunder. Ready? And for the semi-final round, we have removed some of the hand grips that are located on the face of the wall, so this climb will be a little more difficult. And James Cannon, look out. Turbo makes short work of James Cannon. And Thunder, in the meantime, is right on Scott's heels. Scott Bye. not giving up. Thunder's yes. got a hold of his heel. Now hanging on to just one precious grip. By his fingertips. Oh, and Scott pulls three, falls off the wall. Scott, for reaching the higher level, is going to pick up five points on the wall. And with that, he'll cut into the lead of James after three events. Alatra, believe me, would like to do the same with Duran's lead. And she's probably hoping that gold will make quick work of Duran on the wall. Alatra, preparing her mind for the ascent up the wall, is going to be followed by Blaze. Ready? And once again, our contenders given a 10 second head start. We've told you all about Elytra and Duran's athletic prowess, especially Duran, but Duran also extremely intelligent. A bright young woman, holds a master's degree. And Mike, the two of them are having no problem with the repositioning of these hand grips. They're both moving right up the wall, but Blaze is getting very close to Elytra. Duran, this is becoming old hat for you. you. You must enjoy the view from the top. I don't really enjoy it, but I think by having to having climbed the men's side and then having gone up twice, people expect you to do it each time. 
it's, that's a lot of pressure, so I have to do it. <laughs> I, I can't remember if you liked going down or you didn't like going down. I don't like going down. Well, I got bad news for you. You got the 10 points, but you got to go back down. This is a real leap of faith, folks. Congratulations, Duran. Well, Mike, I'd rather go down with 10 points than without them. As a result, Duran continues to increase her margin over a late draft after three events. Over in our men's contest, James leads Scott as they prepare for our battle of the pugil sticks, the joust. Scott's going to be up first, and he's going to be taking on oh, Laser. Larry, by and large, the contenders have fared very well against the gladiators in every event except this one. <laughs> in the joust, they have been taking their licks on the head, in the stomach, across the face, and eventually off the pedestal. Scott doesn't last very long. Laser, a quick winner. And now it's James Kiernan's turn. And usually the man who gets in the first lick, the first blow, makes the first contact as the winner. That's certainly James's mission here. On guard! Well, James utilizes that strategy, Mike, but he gets a little off balance. Laser beating him over the head. James unable to regain his balance and goes off. Laser the victor. Laser, if your joust was a song that would be whoop upside the head, whoop upside the head, and you did that twice to these guys. Total yeah. of six seconds. I laid it to him. I gave the first guy a vertical butt and just laid him out, and the second guy, I just had to get going, just like boxing. Is. Actually, the second guy, James Kiernan, struck you first, and I think that might have been the key to triggering your anger inside. Yeah, he sure did. I had to counter it, and he, he hit me first, which caught me off guard, which first time I've been hit first, and I, I came off, and Luckily, it turned out for the best for me. Good job, well done. Laser shuts out the men in the joust, so James holds on to a six-point advantage after four events. Still to come on American Gladiators is Atmosphere. Then our game of assault, but the women's joust is next. Our women's semifinal round moves on here at Universal Studios Hollywood where Duran Cumberbatch leads Elytra Dorsa after three events. Next up, the Joust. The women are ready, and Elytra is up first. She draws gold. On guard! Well, Elytra coming out on the attack, but a little tentative. Gold, on the other hand, paced her in the side of the head with a couple of severe blows. One sweeping right cross by Gold. That was the name of that tune. Now Duran Cumberbatch. We'll see if she can fare better. She takes a deep breath. As always, very focused. On guard! Oh, looking for another quick knockout. Duran trying to use that pugil stick like a ram, trying to push Gold off the back of the platform. Gold says, no way. She's got a wide stance. Oh, Gold's got her off balance a little bit. Can she take her off? Nine seconds to go. Duran hanging tough. Trading blows at this point with Gold. Looks like she's going to make it. And she does. Tough match. Gold, I guess the contenders see those lovely locks and powerful arms and just say, I'm going to go to distance with this gladiator because you fight to more draws than any gladiator I know of. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I'm famous for these. But she's tough. Great sense of balance she possesses. She certainly does. Now, Duran, you've done a lot of different things in your lifetime as a child. You talked about climbing trees, and that helped you in the wall. But don't tell me that you've ever been punished like this before in your childhood. No, I haven't. <laughs> Not in my wildest jeans, but I think <laughs> or something like this. You say that all these events are fun. How about this one? This is fun. <laughs> it is. Congratulations. You get five points for the draw. Yeah. Nice match. And with those five points, Duran continues to add to her lead over Electra. Over in our men's division, James Kiernan leads Scott Dieter as they take to the arena floor for Atlasphere. And here, both contenders compete simultaneously in an attempt to roll their spears into one of four scoring pods worth three points each. Of course, at the same time, our gladiators are rolling about in spears of their own 
and they're trying to keep the contenders from scoring any way possible. Our leader, James Kiernan, the firefighter from Phoenix, Arizona, getting inside the red atmosphere, Scott Dieter, getting inside the blue sphere. In the two previous atmosphere events for Scott, he has yet to score, so I'm sure he'd like to change all that here. Nitro and Thunder getting the assignment for the Gladiators. It's been likened, Larry, to red, red. a form of demolition red, derby. Blue. Gemini calls Daddy it the rage red. in the cage. What it is is 60 seconds of hard, hard work. And with Thunder in there, you know there's going to be some bent metal in this deal. He wastes no time. Beating head to head with one of the contenders. But both contenders manage an early score. And for Scott Dieter, that's a milestone. His first score, his first goal in Atlasphere. There's Scott again. I don't know where he would have done it, but it looks like he's had some practice time between the last Atlasphere match and now. James being denied. Scott right settling in. He's got it again. <laughs> Scott spending more time upside down in that atmosphere than right side up, but he's scoring points. And there's still 20 seconds left on the clock. There's James out muscling Nitro for a score. Scott in position, but Thunder says no way. <laughs> but he persists and picks up the score. As time runs out, great exhibition by Scott. Three additional scores there. The James won. We're going to leave it at 12-6. Scotty, you finally gave those Dieter Dewitt fans something to holler about. In the span of just one event, you've tied up the ball game. It's 1919 by virtue of your 12 points in Atlasphere. Oh, right. I mean, that, that felt so good. I never scored before. Was it your first time in either the prelims or the quarters? First time I scored. I didn't think I was giving it my best effort the other times. And I heard my chanting going on back there, and it just got me psyched, and I just went all out. Like I said, uh, four goals worth 12 points, and the match is all even between you and James Kiernan. Uh, James, you could have easily scored more, but again, a couple of times you're right on the edge, and the Gladiators were able to knock you out of the scoring pot. It's the semifinals. It's a lot tougher here now. We started a regular five-alarm blaze out there. Congratulations. It's going to be tight going into assault between James and Scott. Scott explodes for the win in Atlasphere. And now ties our men's semifinal after five events. Alatra is going to need a super effort to tie our women's score in Atlasphere. But hopefully she can cut into some of Duran's lead as Duran loads into her Atlasphere. Alatra trying to turn her sphere into the San Jose Express. We mentioned Duran's outstanding academic background. More than anything else, maybe, Larry, she's a, a problem solver. And her problem to solve here is blaze and lace, how to get around them. Well, she has that cool demeanor Ready about her, you know? She sizes up the issue, Ready gets blue. a game plan in her head, Ready and then moves on. A later certainly has a lot of room in that atmosphere. <laughs> it looks a lot different than when Thunder's in there, doesn't it? Probably can fit about three Alatras inside there. <laughs> Grand wastes no time. She heads straight down to a pod and puts it in. Alatra scoring two. Alatra on the move. Alatra picks up a score and Duran matches. Tell you what, Larry, the problem for Alatra and every other contender who has faced Duran is that every time they do well, Duran seems to go them one better. Gladiators have been successful in keeping Duran out of the scoring pot, and that is it. 12 9, the final in favor of Duran Cumberbatch. This goal right here was the difference as Duran wins Atlasphere and rolls on to a larger lead after five events. Still to come on American Gladiators, the Eliminator, but Assault is up next. 
We are back, Universal Studios Hollywood, and we are set for assault. And our men's semi-final match between James Kiernan and Scott Dieter all tied at 19. And in assault, a contender has 60 seconds to hit a target using a crossbow, rocket launcher, cannon, a pistol, and finally three softballs if all else fails. A contender may also earn four points for completing the course without getting hit by a gladiator. And in this case, in the men's division, it's Turbo. And James Kiernan is up first. Ready? He usually tries to put fires out. Now he'd like to start one underneath Turbo. Light him up with a direct hit to that target above him. And we can hear the impact of those tennis balls being fired out of that cannon in excess of 100 miles an hour. That's gonna hurt if it hits you. James wasting no time getting lined up with the rocket launcher. That's it fly and picks off the outside of that target with seven points. Turbo goes up in smoke. James, you and Scott are a tied ball game coming into this event. Neck and neck, both staring into the eliminator. You did a great job. You came out here and took seven points, took the big lead. I need it, Larry. I need it real bad. And uh, Turbo got me off the wall, so it was a little payback today. Well, he got you off the wall for sure. And he laid down a lot of fire. He was not your friend in this event. No, he was a sharp shooter today. Just everything was real close, part my hair every time. Well, you made it through. That's the important thing. And you got seven point lead right now. That's it. Congratulations. Thanks. Good luck in the eliminator. But now Scott Dieter will have his chance to tie the match again, perhaps even go ahead if he can hit that white portion of the target. That's the bullseye worth 10. He's on his way. Oh, little off to the right. Close, but no cigar. The rocket launcher has been the most accurate weapon so far for the contenders, but that one is off the mark. Now he's in under the gun. It's one way to get Turbo angry. He's point blank, and you can hear the impact of those tennis balls. Scott's got a lot of time on the clock. Somehow, if he can take his time here, his arm leaves something to be desired. One last chance. Oh. He was going to go for the draw, but those errant shots with the softballs allowed Turbo to get one more chance at Scott, and he picked him off. Scott operating there at the end, right under the gun, just a few feet away, tries to get his body to the floor, but doesn't make it. And with his win in assault, James reclaims the lead after six events. Meantime, Duran holds a comfortable margin over Elytra, as they now will take aim in assault. And they're going to face off with Ice. Believe it or not, this is one event where Duran has not fared too well. Well, I've heard of hip shots, but I've never seen it with a crossbow. Obviously, Duran's a little uncomfortable in the way she handles the weapons. Still alive, however. Oh! <laughs> In your face, like that. Ice made it out of the way, but I'm not so sure our cameraman did. Final chance coming up for Duran. And time runs out on Duran Cumberbatch, so once again, she is held scoreless in assault. Elytra up next. Hey. Sorely needs some points.
Lakers have been shut out in three of the previous events. This could make her day, however. Give her something to smile about. Oh, very close. Boy, Elytra just can't buy a break. She sees the ball coming. She just can't get her right leg out of the way in time. Well, you looked like a little scat back. You had your glasses on there, your mouthpiece in, had a serious look on your face. I thought maybe we are going to see a 10-pointer. I got to learn to jump higher, Lear, right on the foot. What a whip. Good luck. You're way behind in points, but anything can happen in the eliminator, so give it your best shot. Thanks. Well, I will. We know that. Thank you. So Ice gives the living the whitewash treatment and assault. The score remains the same after six events. Coming up, the eliminator. The site, Universal Studios Hollywood. The final event, the eliminator. Two contenders compete simultaneously. First going against the belts. Once at the top, it's on across a 30-foot span by use of a specially designed handbike. Then the familiar balance beam where two gladiators wait to hurl blocking pads at our two contenders. Ah, but now the fun begins. A tricky climb up a 20-foot cargo net, and then a breezy, wild ride down a zip line which carries the contender over the entire length of the arena floor. Then a final straightaway, where our contenders will make like Edwin Moses and negotiate a set of hurdles. And then a final decision, which lane to take behind three of those barriers, American gladiators all bound and determined to stop the contender from scoring. And coming into this event, Duran leads Elytra by 33 points, meaning that Elytra would have to win by 16 and a half seconds in order to advance. The women have 75 seconds to finish the course, with each second left on the clock worth two points. <laughs> Duran in the red, Elytra in the blue. They're off and running. They made short work of that treadmill. This may be the toughest part of this obstacle course, the hand bike. You have to somehow finesse it across. Duran does that. So does Elytra. This balance beam only six inches wide, but they both successfully crossed that and now up the cargo net. Mike, their upper bodies have to be tired after coming off that hand bike. And this cargo net really tests your endurance, particularly the upper body. Now time for a little fun. Here they come side by side. Duran has this thing won. A Laker just having a little fun to finish things out. And they come across almost in a dead heat. Allie, you've been a tiger all day. You came into this event knowing you're quite a few points behind, but you still you, you held up the par. You attacked the event. Brand's an awesome athlete, but don't tell her or anyone else, but I let her win because, <laughs> because she's from Bermuda, and I always wanted to go to Bermuda. So you might have a trip to Bermuda looming in your future something. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Congratulations, Brand. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Allie, you epitomize what American Gladiators is all about. Well, Larry, you know what? I had, like, the best time, and this has been sweet. Okay, Allie, great job. Duran, obviously, you took it on high points uh, going into the finals. Blew through the eliminator pretty quickly. Well, I knew that I had to make up good points before the eliminator that way I could relax more in the eliminator, so that worked for me. Duran, you did not look like you were relaxing coming through the eliminator, particularly on the cargo net. You flew up the thing. I don't know. I just tried something different. Are you excited about the finals? Looking forward to it? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure you're going to do all right. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice round of applause for Allie and Duran. There it is. The women's final Duran moves on. In our men's event, James leads Scott by seven points, giving him a 3.5 second margin in the eliminator. Now keep in mind, the men have only 60 seconds to complete this course. James Kiernan, the firefighter in the red. Scott Dieter, the mechanical engineer in the blue. Hand bike, no problem for either man. Oh, what a... <laughs> James flying off the balance beam. Looks like he took a shot in the ribs on the way down. Scott not wasting any time. He's not looking back, but look at James, come on! 
James Kiernan assessed a five-second penalty for being knocked off. And that may give Scott Dieter the edge he needs. Scott recognizing that victory's in hand, picks the right lane. It appears, yes, he's picked it up by just two seconds. One of these days we're gonna invent a competition that enables both contenders to go to the finals because both James Kiernan and Scott Dieter, based on their performance in the Eliminator, deserve to go. You had a 4.5 second cushion, James. You had some time to play around with. You knew you couldn't make a mistake, but it happened, it bit you. Yeah, I got hit right on the balance, man. Sorry, Mike, but I gave my best shot. I got no regrets. You, you gave it more than your best shot. What else can we do to you here on the American Gladiators? You and Thunder knocked down the doors in there in the Eliminator. Yeah, Mike, it's rough. It's the semifinals, it was rough. I think I did well here. Is this a statement for firemen everywhere that you guys are tough hombres? Absolutely, Mike. James, we enjoyed your performance. Sorry, sorry it fell a little bit short, but uh, we'll see you down the road again. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. James Kiernan. Scotty, you came from nowhere, pal. You were trailing early in the competition after a couple of the events. Uh, I know you're excited. You got goose pimples up and down your arms. I don't think I've ever accomplished anything as good as this. Uh, it just feels really fortunate to be here because the competition's fantastic. The gladiators are real aggressive and tough. And I had to come back twice today. I, I honestly didn't think I could overcome the first deficit. But after I, I got that, I got a lot of confidence. And I got a good break on the end of the eliminator, which helped me out. Score one for the mechanical engineer, Scott right. Dieter. You're going on to the finals. Congratulations. Scott's come from behind victory in the eliminator gives him the win in our men's semifinal. And he, too, will advance to our final round. We salute Scott Dieter and Duran Cumberbatch, our two new finalists here on American Gladiators. And here's a preview of some of the action you'll be seeing next week. Next week, it's final round action as four contenders take one step closer to becoming America Gladiators champion. Dina Tully, Scott Dieter, Doran Cumberbatch, and Craig Branham. Watch as they challenge Diamond, Nitro, Gold, Gemini, and the rest of the American Gladiators.